Good morning, today is May 13th, 2020. I'm Kimberly Jolly with Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. We're like right in the middle of mania. I have so much done, I'm so excited. Um, I think next week I'll definitely hit a dip because I just keep going and going and I know that I'm gonna burn out at some point. But I wanted to let you know that we just got this piece back and this is our Stitch Quarterly Tees for the next club. So this is our cross stitch club. Obviously this white fabric is hiding it. Priscilla finished this for us and I'm just showing you the top row. It's called American Pride. And um, so that'll give you kind of a hint, but I just wanted to let you know that's gonna ship in early June. And um, so if you wanna sign up, we have some spots, but once they sign up, um, we're only gonna cut that certain amount, if that makes sense. So. I hope you like our tees. We showed a little bit less than last time because you guys said we teased too much last time. So, um, and Cheryl finished this one. So super exciting. I'm gonna put it down before I, um, the paper falls off or the fabric shows up. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's called American Spirit. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, I wanted to show you Bloomtopia. Sure, uh, Priscilla finished hers, so I'm gonna pop that image up. And she sent that to me the other night and I thought, oh my gosh, look how precious. Oh. So, so look at how cute her little doggy is. I think he weighs two pounds. Oh my gosh. So she's going to finish it and then she, we're going to auction it off and all the money is going to go to make a wish because Priscilla is so awesome. And um, we really thank her for that. She was going to come film how to finish it, but obviously I don't think she's going anywhere right now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is our version of Bloomtopia. And Priscilla finished this one. Now this all benefits Make-A-Wish. It's a completely free pattern. And you can see if you look at Priscilla's versus mine, they have two totally different looks. And so that's a way to just show you, you can step out of your box, you can make it your own, and it can look totally different. Like mine looks um, just totally different than hers. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, and so we've raised over $40,000 for Make-A-Wish. So that's super exciting. Thank you to everybody. And um, I'm gonna just go ahead and start with Mania and kind of where I'm at and we can kind of chat about my pieces. I've got some notes here. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna show you um, some new stitch cards by Lori. So I'm gonna start with Mania. We're gonna do the upper camera. So in this bag, I got this bag um, from Dot Dot Goose Designs and I really wanted to have a finish. So um, I used silk threads. I used orchid, rosebud, carnation, and sister scarlet. And I finished. And so I really just, um, this weekend, I just stayed up really late one night and finished it. And um, I watched the Michael Jordan documentary while I was making it. And um, so that's finished. And it's super fun. I really like it. I think it turned out great. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a pattern that we have on our site. It is called Starlit Snowflake. So that's finished. So I really wanted to have at least one finish in my mania, and that was the one that I thought would be the easiest to finish. So it took me quite a bit of time, but it's finished, so super exciting. So now we can go into this week. I worked on Summer Monochromatic by Little House Needleworks. And this is super easy. So this is a pattern and in it comes the thread. So on this one, I use the thread included in the pattern. I'm covering up the pattern because part of the pattern is there. And so I used Wheat Lugana and I had bought a piece at the very beginning of the year to do some Valentine pieces on and I'm still using that piece of fabric. So um, I bought like a yard piece and so I'm just cutting it up and using it. And um, this didn't take me very long. It only took me like four hours, which is not a lot, but I wanted to show you what I did. So when I was looking at the pattern, I guess there's like a lady here. She looks kind of like um, a Quaker lady. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like that. So I thought, well, how do I make, put the fence from over here to over here? And so Denise told me you do it on your phone. So I'm gonna show you how you do it. I know because I didn't know how to do it because I was gonna I was like well maybe I scan it and then flip it and she said oh no you can do it on your phone so I am gonna show you how to do it with the front of the pattern obviously not the pattern because I don't want to copyright the pattern so you see the lady 
right here, but I wanted a fence there. So you hit edit, this little button on the bottom right, it's like a little square. And then up here, you hit this flip thing. Hold on. There. And so there it's flipped. And so you do that with the pattern and then you, I just sat in bed and followed the pattern on the phone. And what I could have done is I could have emailed it to myself and printed it, but I didn't want to do that. So that's what I did on this pattern was just flipped and I just going to have the same on the left and the right instead of the Quaker. And um, I'm getting a little bit faster on the Lugana. I was really slow at the beginning. Um, on this one, I'm doing the loop method and I'm not doing one stitch at a time. I'm just, um, oh, actually on this one I am. I'm keeping the two strands together. And that's gonna, on the um, monochromatics, that's gonna probably be the last time I do that because I just don't wanna mess with doing that. So that's super fun that I got a lot done. Uh, real quick before we move on, a few people are asking what fabric was used in Starlet Snowflake. Starlet Snowflake is Cloud 25 Count Lugana by Lori Holt. It is the same fabric that is used right here. It's the same fabric used right here in Feels Like Home. So the next day, I worked on Snow Village Part 6. Oh, I forgot. On here, I can take my little thing off. Yay! So now I have a couple finishes. Ooh. Yay! So on here, I didn't really spend too much time on this one. I think I spent about three hours. So on this one, it's part one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, you follow the Country Cottage Needlework website and it shows you how, how to place them. And so I really wanted to get the snow done, but I was able to get the snow done, a snowflake, a tree, and um, I think these are wheels. And on to make it easy, I pick my own threads. And so what I do is I write down the called for thread on the pattern and then my conversion. And so when I'm stitching, I can just refer to this really quick. Um, I started this last year and um, this week I'll be working on the next part, which goes here. And so I'll probably just leave all this empty and just keep kind of going. So that's super exciting. Um, I think this one's gonna be really pretty when it's done. Um, it is really hard for me to stitch on because it's 18 count. So it's harder for me to see, but I know in the end I will really like it. This is uh, Feels Like Home, so I need to kind of peek because I have too much going on in here. Oh, okay, I have it in another bag. <laughs> this is feels like home and on this one I'm a little bit so I put all of my thread in this little bag that I bought from Layla May and um, I have my little needle minder but I'm trying to not show you so this one if you're in if you've signed up for this you got part two and part two is the house and I only got the bottom of the house done what I have been doing is I've been doing kind of the medium gray, then the light gray and filling in. I'm doing one X at a time. No, I'm not. I'm doing the loop method so that I don't have as much variegation. So if you look at Cheryl's piece compared to my piece, you can really see that hers has a lot more variegation in the thread. And so she's doing one stitch at a time here. And on mine, I'm just stitching like normal because I don't care about the variegation at all. So you can see how using the same thread gives a totally different look. And of course, every skein of hand dyed thread is gonna be slightly different, but that kind of just gives you an idea. Um, I think I will start part three here 
I do hope to do a little bit more of the house this week, maybe just like two colors up here, so that when I'm done, I was hoping this one would be a finish. I did think I would get the house done, but I didn't have enough time. And so if you have signed up for that PDF, on Friday morning, you will be getting part three. If you haven't signed up yet, you can still sign up. So that is day eight. Day nine, I kept working on Kringles and this actually, this is how I'm using the Biddy design boards. I thought I would show you this week. So when I have leftover, I just put it in a little circle and put it on here. Uh, some people just throw it on there. You can do whatever. Um, I actually got a lot farther. This one went really quick this week. So what I had done before the week started is I had put the green in, like the green part, and that took me a long time. But then I just put the red in and I just did, um, I'm just going straight across and straight back and it only took me two hours. And that was the day on day nine. But then later at work, I kind of filled this in when I had time. And I did, before I stitched the red, I did do this eggshell color because I didn't want my red to bleed into my white. So I um, did the white and I'll probably just work on this little room this week and I won't worry about the rest of the bricks yet because I obviously didn't finish the rest of the bricks, but I ran out of time. Um, but that only took like two and a half hours. So that was really not that much. So I really, if I would have had a little bit more time, I would have been able to finish, finish that. And I am going to make it say Jollies. So that's gonna be exciting. The next one is Prim Village and I'm super excited about this one. This is the one where I kind of stitched in advance. And on here, what I did is I finished this house and then I just said, you know what? I want to be done with this. So I finished these two houses so that this week after next week, I will be totally done. And I've only got a little tiny bit left. I'm almost, um, I'm almost wanting to just finish both of these now so that I have a little bit more time even next week. So I'm so excited um, that I am almost done. It's so pretty. I'm definitely going to frame it in Lori's frame and I'm probably going to paint it Ooh. or send it to Lori's husband to paint. <laughs> I could attempt, attempt it. So that one um, is super exciting. And then the next one I am, I really, really like. This is also prim. This is, this is the prim stitch series where we have a club you can sign up for and This is part two, no, part three, sorry. And so this is all I can show you. Um, it takes me quite a bit to do the border, but now that I've done it three times, it's not as hard. So I can get this border done pretty quick. It took me about five hours the first time and now it takes me maybe three because I kind of have it memorized. And so this is what I got done. Um, so that's kind of my peak if you are in that club. <clears throat> you will be getting patterns for a year and you can stitch on whatever cloth you wanted. I did have a customer that asked me how big I cut this and I used two pieces. I cut two pieces and cut it down and I, um, we have a diagram on how to cut it and I totally forgot the size. So I'm going to just measure it real quick and tell you, but it is on the diagram. So you can either buy one piece of prim cloth or two pieces. So I cut this 12 inches. So, um, but that gives me an, a ton of room around. If you are comfortable with a one and a half inch border around, you can use only one cloth and save money. So it's kind of up to you on what you're more comfortable with. And that is designed by Lori Holt. And then the next one I am doing three Bent Creek in Mania. And this is the first one. So I'm using Gentle Art, Pomegranate, Chalk, Buckeye Scarlet, and Blue Jay. And this is the pattern. The pattern does come with, 
what do you call it? A pearl cotton, but um, I've never stitched with pearl cotton and I didn't wanna try it. So what I did is this fabric is natural light with gel, and I actually just got one piece of it and cut it up into three different pieces and to make one mania, to make three different mania pieces. So on this one, I did uh, kind of, what I did is I did the dark blue on the outside, stopped, did all the light blues, then filled in the dark blue and then did the white. I did the white last, which I usually wouldn't do that way um, just because I'm afraid of the bleeding, but for some reason I just did it different. And it looks pretty, it looks pretty true to the colors here. Mm -hmm. So um, I like this one, it's different than all my others. So that is what I have done for Mania. I, I did wanna let you know that we have more feels like home thread packs and we have dmc thread packs and when they're gone i don't know when we're going to get more we're just trying our best to get dmc we did get a very large shipment of dmc in yesterday so if you're looking for some dmc colors they're online and on this one um classic color works probably be july or august before we get more because they are out of rain shower which is one of the blues so um Super, super, super exciting. So um, I, I wonder um, how you guys are doing on Mania. I would love for you in the comments to let me know like how many projects you're working on. Um, you know, how are you doing? Do you feel good about it? I mean, I feel good about mine. I do feel like I'm gonna get a lot less done next week, but we'll see. All right, uh, we have a few questions, but first of all, we got two super chats uh, right as we were starting the live stream. The first one was from Liberty for me, 11 for 9.99. And they say, thank you for bringing some fun to my day. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And then uh, Robin Norcross gave us a super chat for $50. Oh my goodness, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. That is extremely generous. Thank you. I can buy add another piece to my mania. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not really. <laughs> All right. And then uh, Christy V had said, can you make Starlet Snowflake into a quilt pattern too? So pretty. I don't know. I'll email. Ooh. I'll email Jocelyn right. or did he just email Jocelyn but it definitely won't be anytime soon because we're kind of doing customer service right now mm -hmm. and Linda Biggerstaff says Kimberly is that an app or do you have an iPhone for how you did the picture thing? oh it was just an app so it's just my photo function on my phone yeah so if you have an iPhone um, you should be able to do it in the photo app that comes on it yeah, and then Denise just like told me, okay, go here, push this button. Because I was like, well, maybe I can email it to you and then you can print it. And then when I come in tomorrow, you, I can stitch it and then at, you know, stitch more tomorrow from the previous day. And she was like, no, you can do it on your phone. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know. Uh, Justine Woodward said, is Kimberly doing over one or over two on the Kringles pattern? Over two, and I'm using a Lugana. And Deborah Henderson said, do you always railroad your top stitches, Kimberly? Yeah, almost always. If I'm doing something really small that like, I don't really care that much about, I won't, but mo I would say most of the time I do. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions on the railroading, what is it? And we did a video on it, and what it does is you split your stitches with your needle and it flattens them so that when you go back in, it, uh, makes the stitches the thread lie flatter and um, last week on my thread conditioner that I was using my thread magic we were talking about it and somebody said put your needle in the thread magic and it'll go faster and I was like are you crazy it works so let me show you what I did I was like when I got home I was like oh I'm gonna try it right now so what I did it's crazy like here, I'll just grab a needle. You can just put your, okay, can you zoom in? No. Or top cam? Yeah. Like, there's holes right here. Can you see? There. So look, you can put your needle in there and then pull it out and it's like quicker. It goes, it, it's, it goes faster. <laughs> So it's crazy. I would have never thought that. So, and then we did have a customer email about beeswax and that Clover has a beeswax. Um, and it's similar to the layout of this where you can glide it through. So we did order it and it arrived yesterday. 
I saw it on an invoice, so we will get that online later this week too, if anybody. But yeah, that was super fun. But I have gone really fast this week. Um, like I feel like I'm stitching a lot faster. All right, uh, Dr. Goose Design had said, I think the house looks like Darth Vader, LOL. I wasn't sure oh. which, oh, is it that house, the house. That she's referring to? Yeah. Oh, I see it, I see it. <laughs> like his head. Yeah. I don't, I don't know oh, anything about, funny. I don't know anything about Star Wars. The kids, um, sometimes Kevin wants them to like watch it and I'm like, y'all can watch it. I don't, I don't understand it. It's way over my head. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars is a whole universe. In, I don't. In and of itself. I don't even, I don't know the difference, Kevin makes fun of me, because I don't know the difference between R2-D2 and then C-3-2-P-O or whatever. C-3-P-O. Whatever. He's like, that's not the right person. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> C-3-P-O is the one that looks like a human. I don't know. <laughs> but I call him the wrong thing, and so I just, I'm done with Star Wars. Oh. Um, and then we had a question from Priscilla Martin. She said, are you supposed to see through the, see the background through the cross stitches when you're stitching? See the background through the cross stitch. No. I think maybe she means like the cloth. Yeah, like the. I think she means like the cloth you're stitching on. If you're supposed to be able to see it over, underneath the X's. Not really. Okay. And it would be so. So no, I don't think so. But then sometimes you're gonna see it more. Like if you're stitching on 25 count versus 28 count, it might look slightly different. But um, I don't think anybody's gonna look that close. Like, if Kevin was looking at it, he'd be like, oh, there's a house. There's a bird. Thanks. You know, like, <laughs> most people wouldn't know. Yeah. Or care. Uh, Cindy Purnell had said, good morning. Quick question. I'm wanting to do a red sampler. Do you have any suggestions for a pattern? So there is a red bird sampler and a blue bird sampler. I think it's Bent Creek. And um, there's that. Um, I know we have them in stock. I think it's red space bird. Um, that's all I can think of. Yeah, red bird sampler by Bent Creek. Um, but that's the only one I can think of. It's got, um, it's very Christmassy. It's got the alphabet. It's got trees and a little church and a cardinal. Um, you could do the starlit snowflake and variations of red. Ooh. And that would be really pretty. Yeah. You could even do that all in one red. Oh, that would look really cool. Uh, and then I thought this was a cool comment from Eileen Gabrovic. She said, got my daughter addi addicted to cross stitch a few days ago. She has five whips. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. That's really exciting. Oh my gosh. If I even mention it to my kids, they're just like, I'm going to, I'm going to run from her because. <laughs> like, not right now. Yeah. Uh, Janae Combs was asking if we could show Snow Village again. Sure. So on here, I did the Kimberly Snow Village thread pack. So I changed the colors and the fabric. The fabric I'm stitching on is white petite point on gray. It's 18 count so that it's much smaller. Um, I didn't want something too, too big on my wall. And then there will be another row down here. I'll probably frame it. Um, and I have not done any of the backstitch words or backstitch anything. Um, I'm going to do that all at one time. I don't trust my, I'm not very good at backstitching and I feel like my tension, I want it to all be the same. So I'll do it when I'm completely done and then I'll wait until I know that I have enough time to do it all in one day so that it looks consistent because I don't trust myself. Like as Cheryl's going, Cheryl is doing her backstitches, but Cheryl has much more experience than me. And so her stuff is always going to be, um, more consistent than mine. And speaking of Cheryl, I want to show her mania stuff. So we're going to pop up her. So what she's doing is she's doing two projects a week. Her first one is Izzy Decaying Silver Creek Samplers. And it is, um, she stitched on 32 count linen from her stash. Um, if you want something similar, you could do hazy gray dyed effect from Fabric Flare. And we did, based on your guys' suggestions, we bought... We're looking for a pen. What's the fabric we bought last week? The dyed fabric. 
the company we bought all that fabric from. Uh, Picture This Plus, sorry. So you guys had asked for Picture This Plus, and so we went through with Cheryl, and we picked um, some colors. We bought some 14 count Ada and some 25 count Lugana. We're gonna get that in, wait a couple weeks, and then we're gonna add 28 count linen. Oh, sorry, we bought 28 count Lugana, not 25. And then we're gonna go back and buy 25 count after. This is her next piece. This is Souvenirs from the Heart, Star Spangled Spectacular by With Thy Needle and Thread. She stitched on 32 count from her stash and she would recommend Mushroom Lugana. On Mushroom Lugana, I know some of the colors are sold out right now with Yarn Tree. So if we don't have it in stock, it is on order. Yay! Let me know if you guys have any other questions. And so I love to show Cheryl stuff because it's so different than mine. Like mine, if you look at mine, mine is like all easy and hers is like super complicated and okay. small. I don't know how she can see that small. All right. um, from Gwen Smith, I'm wanting a fabric that's more detailed but has the ease of stitching on 14 count Ada. Is 25 count Lugana as easy to stitch on as Ada? Yes, and it's the equivalent of 20 sorry of 12 and a half so it would be bigger i still use a magnifier when i do it but i have really bad eyesight and when i went to the eyeglass place this weekend they told me that my prescription that i have in my glasses is really really bad so she was like oh yeah your new prescription you're going to really be able to see so i'm actually super excited to see what kind of difference that makes that was one of the first things when texas opened back up is first phone call I made was to get an eyeglass appointment. And so I went Saturday and was super excited. I'm supposed to get my glasses on Saturday. I'm hoping they come. Ooh, that's exciting. Yes, uh, for me, so that I can see, because I can't see anything. And I'm always telling Lily and Denise, I can't see, I can't see, make it bigger. <laughs> and it's, it's hard, you know, it's hard when you can't see because it adds, I don't know that it adds anxiety, but it's just really frustrating because it's hard to get something done. And I'm like one of those people that want to go and when you can't see, you're like, what? Uh, from Kathy Kuginor, any tips for getting Orifloss Tilly flat? I'm working on the FQS red, white, and bloom kit, 10 count fabric, and I'm finding it more difficult to get the thick Orifloss Tilly flat. Okay, because you're using more strands. So what I would do is just pull your strands apart and make them lie flat. And if you are working with four strands, you can railroad in between two and two. Um, so I would kind of just pull your, make your strands, um, take them out of the needle and just make your strands. And you know, that takes more time, but I do that all the time, even working with DMC. Just unthreading, straightening your threads, re-threading, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. From Nita Pool, can I purchase Kimberly's project bags at FQS or patterns to make them? Project bags, okay, so this one, I think we might have some left. This is our Bloomtopia charity bag. I think we have some left. When they're gone, they're gone, but I do think we have some left. These little bags right here are our gingham on the go bags. There are three of them. I actually have all three. It comes in a pack of three. So we sell these. Obviously this little, I stitched this so you can't get that. And they sit up. So all you have to do is, um, they have a gusset in the bottom. Well, it's not gonna work, of course, on camera, but. Um, <laughs> but it does work in real life. It does, well, it's, I got the stuff laying in here funny. There we go. But, um, so there's, so those are those bags. Um, I bought this one on Etsy from Dot Dot Goose. This one we showed on a live stream last year, some different step outs on how to do it. This is a pattern called Love My Stitching, Love My Stitching by Hands On Design. And I changed the fabric and the threads and then added my name and changed changed it. And I talked about that in a video. This one I bought off, no, sorry. Lori gave this to me as a gift. The lady sells the bags on Instagram. Lori can put the name of her, I don't remember it off the top of my head in there. I've got these from Lori. Um, but I, I, you have to follow her on Instagram to buy bags because I want another one. So I was going to go buy and then I don't have an Instagram account. <laughs> so I have to, I don't have an Instagram account. Okay. So, um, and then this little bag is, we sell it. It's a Lori Holt canvas bag. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but I have bags everywhere. I mean. And bags in bags. I'm, I'm just a bag lady, for sure. That's funny. Okay, uh, a few more questions here. Janae Combs is asking, did you cut down the fabric for Snow Village? Yes. So what I did is I took the stitch count, divided it by my thread count on my fabric, and then figured out what the dimensions would be, and I added probably four inches all the way around. It de kind of depends on what day it is. I usually only give myself two inches all the way around, um, and I've read online a lot of people do three inches, so it's kind of whatever you're comfortable with. Um, and then I do, what I do is I'll stick the piece that's left over back in a bag with either a note or something, even if it's a small piece. And then I've got little scraps so that if I wanna make something like one of these pillows, I've got a little stash, but then I keep a note with it. It's kind of like if you went to a cross stitch store, a brick and mortar cross stitch store that are now back at opening up. When you buy it, they usually staple or have something written with what it is. So um, whether it comes in a package from us with a name on it like this, or if you get it from your local, just kind of keep your name, the name of it with it so that if you want to make, you know, say you want to make four pillows, but you only have enough to make two, at least you have a note with what it is. So you at least know what it is. All right. And Lori says, Christy made the bag. She has a floss tube to cross hatch quilts. Cross hatch quilts. And her bag is so cute. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on that one, I don't have the little numbers on my bag because they're on a different bag and I can't find the bag. <laughs> and I don't know where the bag is Aww. and I didn't want to take the time to add more numbers. I just, I can't find the bag. I don't know what I did with it. Aww. So, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from Pat Bro, will FQS ever stock a gray vintage 10 count Ada by Lori or a gray 11 count Ada? That's up to Lori. Ooh. Okay, and Liberty from me 11 says, uh, oh, sorry, Liberty for me 11 says, did Cheryl use the calls for colors on the souvenirs of the heart? Yes. All right. From Deborah Bird, is Fat Quarry Shop doing a sew along using the singing in the rain pattern? Yes. And okay, so going back to Cheryl's, what I did want to say is when Cheryl comes back um, to work in June, she is going to bring all those pieces she's been stitching so you can actually see them in person. So we're going to do that. Um, right now we're just using digital images because she's working from home. The next question is, sorry, Lily, tell me again. Uh, if we're going to have a sew along on Singing in the Rain. Yes, we are. So I talked to Bev about it. We were going to do it June 1st. RFL, I went ahead and did RFL conversion just so that we could have two options, her version and my version, just because I like to do that. But we are waiting on an answer from RFL on when they can ship the colors that I picked. And we also ordered enough of her colors to have those in stock also. RFL is based in Italy. They're just now opening back up. So we are going to base that stitch along around when we hear back from RFL. And um, yes, so it will probably be sometime in the summer. Um, but, you know, I, everything is kind of hard to get right now so um and we don't want to do a stitch along and then have you guys frustrated that you can't get it or um, we've pushed a lot of things back because you know we can't get availability for example Lori um worked on something it's totally amazing we couldn't get the thread from anybody so we're going to push it to next year i mean that's kind of where we're at right now um but it's really amazing and i'm going to stitch it too Ooh. so but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. And so we're not trying to leave you hanging or like not give you details, but we don't want to do something where you get frustrated as a customer because I do try to think of how I would feel in a situation. And like if I was watching me stitch, I would be like, oh, well, I can't stitch that. That's not fair. I mean, that's just not what I want to do. So we're kind of just waiting for an answer. Uh, really kind words from Cindy here. She says, Kim, I look forward to your live chats, highlight of my day, and definitely kudos to you in the Fat Quarter Shop for working so hard during this time and enabling us. Thank LOL. you. Uh, and then we had a super chat from Tula E. Hubbard for $4.99. She says, always enjoy your videos. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Tula. Thank you. So I wanted to show you, um, we are going to be releasing Lori's stitch cards next month. So I'm going to show you her new four ones. Sorry, the new ones. There's four. So this is the first one. It is 
Or should we do over camera so it's not in yeah. my face? So this is camper. And so you can see they're all numbered. Like this is number 17, stitch card E. This is a little doggy. This will be great for July 4th, Old Glory and watermelon, cold watermelon. And so what Lori has done for us, because um, I was gonna film a video, but with everything going on in the world, she did it for me, so I'm super excited. So if you wanna see how Lori finished these, she has a video and we linked to her brand new, brand new YouTube channel Ooh. in our link below. If you just search Lori Holt, it won't pop up yet because it's a new channel. Mm -hmm. So when you type Lori Holt, to be honest, it's going to go to our channel and Riley Blake's channel. So it's kind of hard to find just because it hasn't been on there long enough to be in the search engines. But she's got a brand new video. I looked at it. It's great. Um, mm -hmm. She's got the upper camera going. She shows you exactly how to do this. And um, so she has a big bowl that I showed before and she has done her stitch cards on all different count, 25 count, 14 count, 28 count, and 10 count. And then she puts all of them in a bowl and then it's just a great decoration. Mm -hmm. And so these are coming out next month. We just sent them to the printer and we're super excited. So that is super exciting. So let me know if you guys have any questions on the stitch cards. This is set E, so now there will be a total of 20. 20, so we've got 20 different stitch cards and all of them, there's different borders on each stitch card so you can interchange the borders and the inside. Every inside on the stitch cards is 24 by 24. So as, as we add, you know, we can do different things with it. A right, uh, question with the stitch cards uh, from Deborah Bird. Will they ever be available in PDF? Those will not because on those, because of the size of paper, we have to outsource these to an actual printer in another state that ships them to us and it's super expensive. So these um, we can't print in house because of the size and the paper and just the whole thing. So because of that, we can't afford to do both because if we sold it as PDF, we wouldn't be able to pay for our printing, um, you know, maybe in like five years or something, you know, as you know, way down the line, but it's all just a business. I know it sounds bad, but everything is like, I got to pay my employees. So it's, you have to, I have to just weigh all of those things. And if I didn't print enough, like the more you print, the more your price goes down. So if I sold it as a PDF, I wouldn't be able to print as many and then I wouldn't be able to print them to be able to sell them. So there's like a whole channel that, a whole channel of reasons. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, from Pat Barone, can the stitch cards be purchased individually? Um, they're sold in sets of four and that's how they're printed, packaged, everything. So we don't sell them individually, we just sell them as a set. And they come out once a quarter and Lori designs all of them. Um, they're mostly designed on her quilt blocks that are in her quilt books. From Wilma Evans, what count fabric did Lori use? Oh, sorry. Sample was stitched on 25 count Prim Lugana. Yay. It's on here. <laughs> I was like, uh. It's really hard, guys, to remember all the things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing good to be here. I worked till 9.30 last night, so I'm good to be here. Uh, and then we did just put a link to Lori's channel in the chat right now. Uh, please hop on over there and subscribe to her channel. Yes. The video is really cute, really fun to watch. Highly yes. recommend. Uh, Pat Boyd says, what size is the frame with the Lori Holt Prim cross stitch on the top shelf on the set? It is the, this one, mm -hmm. it is the Lori Holt medium frame, medium square frame. So I don't know the size. Here we go. 12 inches on the outside, eight inches, about eight inches on the inside. And she painted this with denim paint. 
and this is stitch card set one so if you signed up for her club you can see part one you can either stitch it as a whole or individually everything is available online free on that but the club you would get it once a month for a year starting in july this is my finish lori is so awesome to finish them for me and um, she's going to also finish hers and then when she's done with hers i can show it to you similar to this where we cover it up i feel like that's gonna fall down but that's okay <laughs> um kind of where we can um finish it and then on the question of if we have these bags in stock we do have some okay uh and from matthew modisit i just learned how to cross stitch watching your videos and have more kids and got kits and got the quarterly cross stitch subscription from fat quarter shop what's your trick to working motifs with multiple colors so what we do is we have lots of people who work here who are artists, like true artists, and they draw stuff. So sometimes people just graph stuff on literally grids. Sometimes we draw stuff and then someone converts it into a grid, but I do none of it. Um, I am not artistically or computer inclined at all, but I have lots of ideas. So um, sometimes I'll say, like for um, Stitch Quarterly, I was, I just, we all had ideas and I liked the idea of a home with a wreath in the center of the O. Well, that didn't work, so then we did the sunflower. So, you know, it's just kind of like start with an idea and go from there. You have to have some kind of computer knowledge, which I have none. Um, I remember like 10 years ago, like Jocelyn's worked for me forever. She was like, oh, you could learn in design. It's easy. And I was like, Jocelyn, you don't know me very well, but no. <laughs> Oh. I like and then you know she did I remember like 10 years ago she sat with me and tried to show me and I was like Jocelyn no no I'm and sorry. at some point I wanted to be a computer science major I, that would have never worked out oh. I would have been fired in my first job <laughs> that would have that never worked out uh, and then question from Doc Doc Goose how's Piggy oh he's bad oh. he's bad um, he just he's been really bad so He's, um, he's really fine, but he's been not very good. Aww. He just does, I think he's done with all of us. So we have some new items I was gonna tell you about. The first one is Long May She Wave by Priscilla and Chelsea. This is number two top seller on our website, which is super exciting for them as new artists. This is Sam and Liberty. So it's Uncle Sam. And then Country Cottage Needleworks. This is called Garden Party. This is one of their original patterns and they re-released it. And at the same time, Little House Needleworks re-released Inspirational Scriptures and they're a mom and daughter team. And so they kind of just decided to re-release these. And I was excited that, you know, something that they had from a long time ago was re-released. So we just got that in. So if you are in the Bloom Chalkful Club, this would have shipped to you. And we have some kits left over. So let me uncover the design. Yay! And I started this one last week as part of Mania. I added it in. I haven't worked on it since, but that's super exciting. And then, um, like a year and a half ago, a long time ago, I told you guys about these awesome frames that we got from Family Tree Frame Company, which is also owned by Little Country Cottage Needleworks, Little House Needleworks, someone in the family. So these frames are now in stock. We got 12 of each. Some are sold out already. Um, but they're really expensive and um, they're handmade. The wood is hand cut, everything is hand done, hand painted. That's why they're expensive. We only got 12 of each just because that's, I didn't know if they would even sell, um, but they are. And then this, we had had asked for quite a while ago and they got this done. So this is a frame that Lori had picked the, um, picked from their other frames and had it painted. And so we're selling this that will fit the Quilty Love. So if you made the Quilty Love with us earlier in the year, we now have the frame to go with it. So just search Family Tree Frame Company. So those frames came in, so I'm super excited. And we will reorder, like when we sell out of the frames, we will reorder 
um, that's um, something we will do. Okay. A uh, comment from Gabriel Fuentes. He said, I told you to send Piggy to me for a little vacation. Oh, my goodness. He, would, he put a bunch of those, like, crying, laughing I emojis. know. He's, okay, so I'll tell you the story. I wasn't going to tell it, but oh. I'm going to tell the story. Oh. So I got home really late last night because I have to do my mania and then my work. I got home really late, like 10 o'clock. And I walk in the house. Piggy's dog bed is not there. And I'm like, where is his dog bed? It was in my bed. So the kids had put in my bed the dog bed and i'm like why is the dog bed in my bed so i just threw it off my bed because why do i need a dog bed in my bed when the dog sleeps in the bed so when i woke up this morning next to my bed was my son in the dog bed he slept in the dog bed because because he they call it he calls it sneak when i come home the first thing he says to me can i sneak can I sneak? That means, can I sneak in your room? And I'm like, okay. Because, oh. I mean, even if I tell him he can't sneak in there, he's going to sneak in there. So him and his sister, they start in the same bed in her room, and they sneak. And when they come downstairs, they have devised a plan that Kevin has not figured out. And it is hilarious. So Kevin's, okay, so this is like the stairs over here. <laughs> Kevin's office is over here. He works till like 2 o'clock in the morning every night. So instead of walking across to our bedroom, where he can see them, they have now decided to go all the way through the kitchen on the other side of the living room and then get in there. And now he can't figure out how they get in there because he can't kick them out. And so they have devised a plan to sneak in the room and he cannot figure it out. And I don't know how he hasn't figured it out yet. But um, when I woke up this morning, um, my son, he's usually in the bed. He was on the floor in the dog bed. And I was like, first of all, that's gross. Second of all, I'm a bad mother. And third of all, what is going on? Like, what is going on where my kids can't even sleep in their own bed? And I was going to show the picture, but then I thought, well, people are probably going to complain and say I'm a bad mother and I'm gross. And oh my gosh, it's um, so the first thing I did was that is being washed. And we're going to have a discussion with him about don't sleep on the dog bed because he has like blankets that are right there because we keep them there because we know he's going to come in there and we don't want anyway. Is it a big dog bed? Yes. Okay. It's like this big. Oh, Here, okay. I'll show you. That makes a lot more sense. Hold on, I'll show you. It's really bad. If he fits in the dog bed, that's him in the dog bed. Oh, okay. So he's in there with his blankets in the dog bed. Yeah, he fits in the dog bed. I mean, honestly. And sometimes they sit near the dog bed when they watch him because we have to keep him on a leash because he will be bad in the house. So he just kind of chills in his bed, but yeah. That was exciting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But it's just like, what is, it's kind of like the whole idea of what is going on in the world right now? What is going on? What has my life turned into? How am I going to get through today? Oh my goodness, this has got to stop. But that's what I, yeah. Uh, Everyone thinks it's hilarious in the chat. Uh, Also, honestly, the dog bed looked really comfy. It is comfy, but it is getting washed because (laughs) it's like just really big and he sits in there and yeah, I just. I woke up and I was like, really, this is really what my life has come to. Oh. Uh, and people are saying you are an awesome mom. Oh, thanks. Okay. And we do have a few questions here uh, from Adam Aitston says, when using 18 count polka dot fabric, how many strands shall I use for Snow Village? I'm using two and I go over one and with it, it just fills more of the fat, more of the fabric. So your, your thread will look a little bit puffier because it's a smaller space. So I have to railroad on that. I cannot not railroad or it will be messy looking. And I do use a magnifying glass. I cannot see that without it. Uh, From the Pokey Little Pineapple uh, question for Priscilla's chalkboard charts. I'm torn between chalkboard versus black fabric. Any opinions? So I've used chalkboard on everything just because I I like that look. Um, I think black might be harder to see. But it's totally up to you. I mean, whatever you think would look good. We're we're always adding more fabric each week. We're trying to order, you know, a little bit of this and that and some new stuff come and there's a one of our distributors comes out with new fabric and we just ordered a new black. Mm-hmm. It's not here yet. Um, but it's like a pure black. I don't know when it'll arrive. But it's one that comes on a bolt, so we'll cut it up. But it hasn't shown up yet. Uh, and I think this is the last question here from Angela Stoutinger. Did you ever find your July cottage? No. 
I don't know where that thing is. Oh. And the place that does my framing, I, that's one thing I want to do is kind of follow up with them that maybe I left it there or, but they're not open yet. Um, I'm not sure when they will open. Austin has opened or Texas has opened um, back up at 25% capacity, but um, I had to drive by there the other day um, because I totaled my car and had to go pick up a new car. And when I drove by, they were still closed. So I'm not sure when they'll open back up, but I am gonna check with them. But I really don't know where it is. Um, it's really sad. I'm, a, I'm almost afraid that I might've packed it and put it in stuff that we took the storage unit. So that's my one concern is that I hope it's, we do have a storage unit that's really tiny, but it is air conditioned. But um, I'm, and the, to be honest, the only reason we have a storage unit is because Kevin refuses to throw away the children's clothes. I swear everything they wore until they were five, he will not throw it away. And so we just have buckets of clothes, which eventually maybe I'll turn into a quilt or something, mm. but just, and stuff from our childhood that we just don't want to get away, get get rid of and we don't have an attic in our house when we moved in our house kevin was like where's the attic i was like i don't know and there's no attic so we kind of we well we didn't kind of we ran out of room in the garage and we have a big shelf and we just have a lot of decorations and so um we had to get a storage unit so i'm afraid that i might have put it in there but it'll be okay since it's air conditioned but the next time we go to the storage unit i'm going to go through all the boxes mm -hmm. and see if it's in there all right, and we do have uh, one more super chat from Is Loves Is, I think. That's what the username is, uh, for $1.99. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And then question from Diane Bemis. What other color fabric could be used for Snow Village? For Snow Village, the called for color country French rain, and it's more of a country blue. And that was what she called for. I think it would look good on gray. Um, I would I would definitely not do white because there's so much snow and so much white. So you just need something to contrast. A lot of the colors that I'm using are more gray. Um, you could look at her website and um, you could also look on Instagram at the hashtag for that pattern to get some ideas because a lot of people are stitching it. Cheryl's stitching it. Um, I could bring in Cheryl's when she comes back. She's stitching on country French rain and the linen. Um, and so you could see kind of how that looks. She just needs something that will show that white. I would kind of not go with the brown though. I would go more gray, blue, and steer clear of white or cream. So thank you for watching. Um, I can't wait for you to get part three of Feels Like Home on Friday. I hope that you guys love it. Um, we've had a lot of fun putting that together for you guys. Thanks for watching. I know there's lots of things you could be doing with your time, and I'm honored that you um, watch. And um, I'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys.